New Daily Dose video. The Ice Age tier list. This, I mean, I kind of know, like, Willie Mammoth, the dude from uh, Ice Age, <clears throat> the one that's always chasing the acorn. That dude. Um, what else? And sloth? Sit the Sloth? This video was made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. That was not After the age. dinosaurs were nerfed, a lot of niches were left wide open. The power vacuum created a lot of pretty janky builds, most of which ended up getting nerfed in the final Ice Age balance patch. So but the, nonetheless, the whole world was some ice. of the most interesting and unique builds of all time were part of the Quaternary meta. And so I think it's time to finally create the Ice Age tier list. Okay. It's tough to make a fair tier list simply because just about every build that went extinct can directly or indirectly blame humans. Oh, Humans damn. unlocking projectile weapons gave them such an oppressive advantage over large mammals damn. that they became totally unstoppable in they any server broken. that lacked the proper counters. And literally just but since you should already mammoths. be fully aware of how OP humans are, we're going to kind of skip past them in this tier list and talk about the other great builds from the Ice Age meta. As always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list mm -hmm. and move up from there. In F tier, we have the Megalosaurus, aka the Giant Deer build. This giant build holds deer. the record for most evolution points put into the Antlers ability. Now, I've talked huge. about the concept of diminishing they, returns before. Aren't there deers out there that look that big, though? On this channel. For example, discussing how the poison dart frog having toxins that are strong enough to drop an elephant is probably a bit of overkill. Mm -hmm. But in that case, it's not that being too poisonous is a problem. It's just that some of those evolution points probably would have been better spent somewhere else. Sweet. But in the case of the giant deer, not only is this level of antler growth excessive, he it's genuinely detrimental. He doesn't need all that, bro. How's First he of all, sleep? antlers have a significant equipment load cost. Sprinting, mm. fighting, or really just any everyday action costs more stamina when you're weighed down by heavy antlers, Damn. increasing the deer's food requirements they, and they causing it to themselves. require rest more frequently. Second, antlers do break in combat quite frequently. While they're certainly powerful enough to defend from carnivore players, their purpose is to give male players a way to complete the alpha male and mating side quests, and are frequently broken during oh, these challenges. Too, oh, literally With normal-sized antlers, this isn't too big an issue, but when they each weigh 40 pounds, a break to one antler might also mean a break the to the strongest next, neck, or at bro. the very least, make it tough to maintain your balance. I know he's a, Lastly, he's deer rely on stealth bro. and mobility to evade attacks. Mm -hmm. The most common line of play is for deer to Deers run fast, to the safety of the forest, where they can hide much more effectively. Not only do antlers make it harder to run and make you stick out like a sore thumb, mm -hmm. but their enormous hitbox makes it impossible to enter dense forest, insane. a potentially game-ending limitation. Giant deer may have been I mean, they break, they probably take so long to grow back. They were one of the few builds that were actually buffed overall in the final Ice Age balance patch. Power, good power, In D good tier, defense. we have the Calicathir, a horse build that's that? specced into tree browsing and four-limb claws, that similar to the giant brown sloth. PBS Eons has already done an awesome okay. video on the Calicathir, so I won't spend too much time on them. But I will say that unfortunately, unlike the ground sloth, Calicathirs were significantly Yo. worse at combat than the giant this, sloths that they were trying to and frequently they got bodied by? by predators that ground sloths would have had no trouble that? fending this off. This is not the Ice Age, bro. I don't have too Why much else sand? to say about this build, but yeah, horse mains, you've got a good thing going. The, you don't need to copy. I don't even know. Was the Ice Age like the Ice Age? Right? Was the, the whole world was just covered in ice or snow? Right? That's what it means. How long did it last? In C tier, we have the Terror Bird. Terror birds are basically an attempt to recreate the dinosaur build after non-avian dinosaurs were banned in the Cretaceous Paleogene balance patch. Mm -hmm. And credit where credit is due, it does do a decent job of it. Terror birds were actually pretty OP in the early post-dino meta, having the best mobility and power at the time. Oh, they go, However, they as the meta fast. progressed towards the Ice Age, mammal builds finally unlocked better defensive and offensive well, tools the tiger, to combat this playstyle. And while their high damage pack attack could still bring down a large mammal in a few hits, its damage is completely negated by armor, failing where a pre-patched dinosaur's crushing bite would have had no trouble. Mammals eventually developed high damage attacks of their own, leaving the Terror Bird player base with only one solid advantage, being able to stand on two legs. This is actually a pretty significant advantage, wow. but it's best used in conjunction with powerful grasping or slashing forelimbs, a trait Terror Birds failed to take advantage of. Speaking of armor, next up on the tier list is the Glyptodon, bro, best like, armor just, build of the Ice Age. It's just meta. upwards, bro. Glyptodons were pretty safe from predators, being able to block attacks from most of the combat. Armadillo looks like an armadillo. They also possess two powerful offensive moves. The first being Skull Bash, and the second. Oh being yeah, with well, the opossums. The opossums reminiscent of the Ankylosaurus, although nowhere oh, near nah. as strong. They weren't by any means below average they had the tails builds, too. 
but as a tank role, I don't think they were near oppressive enough in terms of area denial for me to rate them any higher than B tier. Also in B tier, we have the Woolly Rhinoceros, a more powerful version of the modern day Rhino build. Rhinos themselves are a tank variation of the horse build, mm. and personally, I don't see them as particularly viable in the modern day meta, due to a combination of Damn, two reasons, Dior. low intelligence Detail? and poor eyesight. This combination oh, yeah, makes sure. it very difficult for the Rhino to determine see, friend from foe, and as a result, Rhinos often team kill each other. They are hyper aggressive, often attacking anything that they detect in their territory, which can include ridiculous things such as trees, rocks, Sweat. and termite mounds. Anyways, I wouldn't put Got modern day Rhinos any higher than D tier, but Woolly, Woolly Rhinos, despite having the same issues, are powerful enough to earn a spot was. in B tier, just because of how important defense and Damn, offense was during this time. With this the power creep starting looks to real. reach dinosaur levels, being able to defend yourself is those, critical, those, and the Woolly Rhinoceros had perhaps bro. the most threatening weapon in the entire game at the time. Last in B tier we have cool. the Dire Wolf. Dire, dire Wolves wolf. were the premier pack hunting build of the Ice Age meta. They were more powerful than so any this of the, is the Ice Age today, icy. but actually on the weaker side when it comes to dogs throughout the Cenozoic meta. Earlier on, what during the Oligocene and Miocene when it comes to dogs... What dogs are these? What's that? That's a bear in the back? Have no idea throughout the Cenozoic meta. Earlier on, during the Oligocene and Miocene expansions that came just before the Ice Age, there were even stronger dogs, like the Borophagine and Bear dogs. Mm -hmm. And yet it seems like the player base has constantly been shifting towards smaller, less powerful canine builds that were more agile and efficient. Like very I fast, think the reason for this is that the canine class in general is just best suited to the pack hunting strategy. Team strategy is perhaps the best way to take on builds. Oh man, above that, that clip always gets me. The thing to keep in mind is that if you're teaming up with other carnival butthole. players, you'll need to split the loot from your kills. This gets to be a problem if your entire team is playing as the larger, more powerful dogs, because mm -hmm. they have a much higher food cost. Since pack hunting is still plenty effective, Coyote. even when the individual members of a pack aren't particularly strong, mm -hmm. it makes sense why the Dire Wolf player base eventually shifted towards the smaller Grey Wolf build. Still, at the time, they were a force to be reckoned with although they often were unable to defend their kills from the more powerful solar Damn. DPS builds of the Ice Age. What, all in what all, is that? not top tier, but by no means low tier. Smacking them to a blow. Alright, so in A tier we've reached builds that are all pretty much unimpeachably overpowered, and would still likely rule the meta today if not for the absolutely broken build that is the human. First, let's talk about the most famous build from the Ice Age, the Mammoth. Mammoth. Mm -hmm. Mammoths had the highest HP of any Ice Age build, and also some so top tier gear alive during the Ice Age, the is what he's saying. Mammoths, as well as elephants today, also had one of the most unique abilities ever seen in the game, a trunk. Choosing between a quadrupedal and bipedal build is a difficult choice. Quadrupeds are much more stable and tend to have higher run speeds, but, my, but using all four limbs to walk means you can't use them to grab or pick up the, items. Oh my god. Proboscideans like them. mammoths and elephants subvert this issue by putting enough points into the nose skill tree to unlock the trunk. Oh, basically giving so themselves cool. a fifth appendage. That is so cool. This is an extremely powerful and versatile ability that easily earns them a high tier spot. It, the only thing keeping them it. down is that they had an absolutely abysmal matchup versus humans. While many of the Ice Age mid-tier and top tiers had an unfavorable matchup against humans, this the Mammoth was especially real. terrible because they're such a big target and worth so much XP. At the top mm -hmm. end of A tier is the other Ice Age all-star, the Sabertooth. Saber, in terms of critical Saber hit damage, Saber. nothing else even comes close to what Sabres can dish out. Oh, Sabres man. actually Ooh, had a different bro, this, play style than the big cats build is so fire, bro. Their lower agility made it tough for them to chase down prey. That and build so they had so to fire. use stealth not just to get close, but to get literally within range of a strike. Damn. They could take down basically anything that they wanted, but it's important to note that due to how fragile their fangs oh. are, they couldn't use them in combat to deal damage to their foes. They so, were reserved so specifically much useful, for finishing useless? off a downed player. Their high power stat comes more from their bulky front limbs than from their teeth. Mm. While few builds could stand up to them, they did have a poor matchup against the next two builds on the list, the top tiers. What the hell is that? The first S tier is the giant ground sloth. A build I've discussed they were that good? in my video about why sloths Damn. aren't OP anymore. But to recap, they, they could body just anyone in a 1v1 match. They're mid right And because now. they were one of the few mammals to pull off bipedalism Damn, correctly, they boxing. were much less vulnerable to stealth based approach strategies. That boy boxing. Height. Check out this video for that more info. sloth was boxing. It's not, it doesn't even look like a sloth no more, bro. Cave bears cave just bear. had insane stats across oh the board. Oh my god. And Almost, I mean, bears right now probably have max power. Good defense, good mobility. Bro, bears are actually broken, to be honest. Even the bears right now, I think they're probably the most broken. The polar bear, broken. Grizzly bear, broken. Black bear. Here's the kicker. They were scavengers. Depends. You can't just put these kinds of stats on a scavenger. 
A bear this big could steal kills from entire packs of dire wolves or saber tooths all by itself. Damn. But if there weren't any chumps around to do the bear's work Just for it, killing. the bear could either take down some huge quarry by itself or simply fall back on the numerous herbivorous options available to it. It's obvious that the devs had to nerf this build because it had basically no weaknesses. It's the mm -hmm. only build on this list that humans are almost certainly not responsible for the extinction of. Damn. In fact, the reasons for the bear player base shifting towards the smaller bear builds aren't well understood by data miners at this point. All we do know well, what about is that the when they were in bear? the game, they were absolutely broken during the meta full of broken oh my builds. God. If you like learning about builds from past expansions, there are tons of documentaries I'd recommend. My favorite is the Walking With series, including Walking With Dinosaurs, Walking With Monsters, and Walking With Beasts. Many of the clips in my videos are from these documentaries, as well as many others, as I'm sure many of you have recognized. While they're awesome resources for learning about prehistory, they're Dead. worth watching for the nostalgia factor alone. Dead. Lucky for you guys, I've been sponsored what, what's by that, what's that animal called? The Mosasaurus or something? streaming like? service with a massive library. That's called the Mosasaurus, right? Can't believe the, the cameraman got that close to a woolly rhino. Bro, I'm saying, bro. I'm saying. You got hella close. Hella close. The bear players nerf themselves out of fear of being banned alone, like the dinosaurs. They did not want to get banned like the dinosaurs. The godly squirrel rat, nicknamed Scrap. That is immune to the heat of the Earth's core and can survive 11,000 floors plus the power of black holes just to get his nut. That's what I said, bro. That's what I said. Now, Scrap is Im immortal, bro. He always respawns. If he, even if he gets banned, he's going to respawn, bro. He's just like that. He's just built like that. It's different. 